the water inlet solenoid opens and begins to fill the reservoir. You'll be able to see two streams of water behind the curtain. You'll hear the compressor start up and run. Also, the hot gas valve will open. You should note that the hot gas valve and the water inlet solenoid are connected in parallel and will always come on and go off together. On the schematic shown here, you'll see how the power is distributed within the unit at this time. The condenser fan motor and the water pump will be off at this time. In a little while, the reservoir will be filled, but the water will continue to overfill and run out the drain. This is normal and helps flush out the reservoir to reduce scale buildup. The controller self-test is a diagnostic routine that tests several functions of the unit. Start with the unit unplugged and no ice touching the bin thermostat sensor bar. Remove the top and back panels. Just click on them. This will give you access to the thermistor on the suction line. Push back the insulation. Then, remove the thermistor from the clip. Now, turn off the water supply valve. Remove the front panel. Again, just click on it. Take a cup of ice in water to make an ice bath. The temperature should be 32 degrees Fahrenheit, or 0 degrees Celsius. Place the thermistor in the ice bath. Now, plug the unit back in, and turn the master switch to the on position. The airflow through the condenser can also be caused by a poor choice in installation location. Hiding an ice machine in a closet or enclosed cabinet will affect the airflow and cause problems. An ice machine must breathe to function properly. That means the louvered panel on the front of the machine must be completely unrestricted. Another reason for long cycle times is a high ambient temperature. This not only increases the cycle time, by not allowing the condenser to cool the refrigerant sufficiently, but increases melting of the ice in the bin.